Hey guys, I'm Nicole with Sono, and today we get to do something really fun for this hair tutorial. As you know, or maybe have seen in the past, I am a hairstylist, and so this video is gonna be a little fun for you guys that are hairstylists, or those of you at home that maybe need a little bit more information on coloring your hair extensions, this will be really helpful for you too. So, what we're actually going to do is create almost an ombre or a little bit of a balayage effect on our hair extensions today from kind of a chestnut color of brown down to our blonde. So we're starting off with just our blonde extensions here. And what we're going to do is just drag that darker color down to create a little bit of an ombre. So how we're gonna start here, of course, first is what I like to do when I'm actually doing this sort of thing for hair extensions is I like to just separate the extension almost in half. You'll be able to kind of feel with either a weave comb or a rat tail comb, sort of where the center is. I just kind of take that top layer off. The most important thing with coloring, well, hair in general, but especially extensions, is that they can be fully saturated. So that's why I'm separating this in half. It feels a little weird at first, but once you get it, just go ahead and flip it over. Now normally when I color hair extensions, especially a solid color, I just leave the center down and I make sure I fully saturate and I flip the extension over and go down that way. But since we're actually doing more of an ombre here, I'm gonna do it split down the center like this. My formula here is Tressa Color and when we're coloring our hair extensions, we wanna make sure it's a demi or semi-permanent hair color. This is a 7R mixed with a little bit of a 6G. So what you're gonna wanna do starting off is just holding that top part away. I'm just going ahead and lying some color down up here. Again, since this is gonna be ombre, right here is gonna be a section that's all the way covered. So your biggest thing is just making sure that it's saturated. You don't have to worry necessarily about where you're starting and stopping. Just make sure you get all the way to the top of the hair extension all the way in there as it's folded. Okay, and once you feel like that top is saturated, now you're gonna go ahead and create your uneven or, or inconsistent pattern here a little bit. So depending on what you have, if you have dark that's way down low, dark that's higher up, it's just kind of depending on what you have or your client has, if that's what you're doing here. But all you're going to wanna do is just go ahead and drag the color down either with a normal tint brush or you can use more of a tiny balayage brush. But just make sure it's uneven. So what I mean by that is that the starting point and the stopping point is different on all of these pieces. Like this one I'm gonna drag all the way to the end and I'm gonna make sure that that piece is fully saturated to the bottom. And this piece here, as you can see, just stopped pretty midway. Along with this one, I'm actually gonna drag this one down further too. And then starting over here. Now, when I get to this point, you just wanna make sure that you are being pretty clean about it, not getting too many blotches anywhere, but making sure that this line varies quite a bit. That's the most important part. That and its saturation. So, once I've kind of got all the way to the bottom, I like to just take my finger and blend that color down so that the transition from the dark to the light is very soft. Okay, once you feel like that layer is completely done, I'm gonna just move on to the top here. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually flip it inside out here, making sure I got that whole center really good and saturated. So, just getting into the center there, making sure you got your color in there well. And for this top part, I'm gonna leave the highlights a little bit higher. Again, that's just gonna vary on what you have or what look you're creating or what your client has. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it down, not too far and only pretty much about three of these pieces here. I want some of the highlights that sit on top of the extension to be up a little bit higher. And for the depth underneath. 
So going ahead and dragging again, making sure the top is fully covered. And then again with my finger, I'm just gonna go ahead and push the color in. You don't wanna necessarily have a lot of pressure and smoosh it too much. You just wanna make sure that it makes that line nice and soft so there's not any harsh starting or stopping points. Just kind of all the way to the end. And now we're going to go ahead and leave it here. So once you've applied the color here, you know, I would always just follow manufacturer's instructions. Extensions are a little bit different and tricky sometimes. So I always recommend that you check them every five minutes. Like I said, only demi or semi-permanent hair color, but just checking it every five minutes to see where it deposits. Sometimes with hair extensions, they deposit really, really quickly, sometimes a little bit later. So no matter what, I would at least try to stick with the manufacturer's instructions, and then besides that, make sure you're just checking it, and you should kind of know when it's exactly done. And to check it again, just rub off a section really well with your finger to make sure that the pigment is fully deposited and it looks saturated and clean and then you'll be ready to rinse it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this process and shampoo with the sulfate free shampoo and conditioner and get it all dry and let you see what it turns out. Okay, so we've washed and blow dried and I even gave the extension a little bit of a curl to show you how our ombre turned out. So as you can see, it's kind of just nice and light and you might be wondering why to a 7R, you know, is so much more of a brown than actually so red. But of course, so if you are a hairstylist, you just can keep in mind and need to keep in mind that those pigments that are missing from the hair extension itself, that you just wanna make sure to add back in. So why I did a 7R was to make sure that I added that depth of a red in with a little bit of a 6G, so some of that golden pigment is added back in as well, just to kind of make a brown. Of course, if I put just a neutral on, it would be a lot ashier or cooler than a true neutral would actually be. So, we have a nice, just light brown here, and as you can see, some of the pieces that we dragged down at the bottom show, and other than that, we just have the nice blonde highlight that comes through. This color of hair extension I started with was a number 613, just so you know, so you can kind of compare what that blonde is down on the bottom. And I ended up proce processing this for 25 minutes. So hopefully this tutorial is helpful for you guys. We're actually going to do a color series of things so you'll be able to see a lot more fun, helpful tips and tricks and trends. If there's anything else that you guys wanna see, make sure you put it in the comments below and I'll get that tutorial done for you and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you later. Thank you.